The Mac is not only an integral part of Apple's ecosystem today, but it's also the longest running product in the company's history, dating back to 1984. In fact, the Macintosh existed before Apple even had an ecosystem of different products, and that puts it in a unique position today. Compared to more recent releases like the Apple Watch, iPad, and iPhone, the Mac uses an entirely different type of technology, a mouse and keyboard, instead of a touchscreen. This has caused many people to wonder whether or not Apple would eventually add a touchscreen to the Mac and therefore make its operating system touch-based like on every other product they offer. But since reporters and customers have been asking this question, Apple has remained adamant that a multi-touch Mac doesn't make sense, and we're going to find out why in this video. This is Greg with Apple Explained, and I want to thank Squarespace for sponsoring this video. This was the number one topic of the last voting poll, and if you'd like to participate in the next one, make sure you're subscribed and the polls will start showing up in your mobile activity feed. So let's start off with the official reason Apple gave as to why they haven't included touchscreens in the Mac. Apple's senior vice president of software engineering was asked this question directly back in 2018, and he gave a pretty direct answer. Federighi said, We really feel that the ergonomics of using a Mac are that your hands are rested on a surface, and that lifting your arm up to poke a screen is pretty fatiguing. I don't think we've looked at any of the other guys to date and said, how fast can we get there? So according to Apple, the biggest hurdle to a touchscreen computer comes down to a simple matter of comfort, and it makes sense. Products with displays that are used horizontally, like iPhones and iPads, feel very natural to tap. But computer displays are almost always used vertically, so hovering your arm to interact with elements on the screen would quickly become uncomfortable. Just take a look at existing PC notebooks on the market today. Almost every model over $1,000 has a touchscreen but what percentage of users actually use them? If you browse internet forums, you might come across people saying things like this. Generally, I don't use it. I have two Chromebooks, I just have it on as a gimmick. On my laptop, it's just annoying. I didn't want a touchscreen. My laptop was a good deal and just happened to have one. Comments like these can be heard over and over from users, with some people not even realizing their notebook had a touchscreen in the first place. So Apple took an entirely different approach to touch on the Mac with the touch bar in 2016. It was an OLED display strip that replaced the computer's row of function keys. According to Apple, it would allow users to use their Mac in ways never before possible. With each application, a new interface would be displayed on the touch bar, allowing for greater flexibility and capability than physical function keys. But things didn't quite pan out the way Apple expected. Applications didn't utilize the touch bar to its fullest potential, keyboard shortcuts were often faster to execute, and many pro users hated the virtual escape key. So Apple tried satisfying users by reintroducing the physical escape key in 2019 with the 16-inch MacBook Pro, and rumors suggest that the 2021 model won't have a touch bar at all. So it turns out that there's a lot more to perfecting touch on the Mac than adding a horizontal display strip. Just like there's a lot more to building your own website than simply finding a domain. That's why you should use Squarespace to make the process of creating your own website as effortless as possible. They have a drag and drop interface that's so simple even I can use it. Plus, Squarespace automatically optimizes your website for mobile devices, so you don't have to waste time creating a desktop and mobile version of your site. They have built-in analytics tools that report page views, traffic sources, time on site, most read content, and more. You can create an exclusive paid membership area, just like on YouTube, and you can even create an entire e-commerce store to sell physical or digital products. I actually did that a couple years ago to sell merch, and it was way easier than I imagined. Also, if you Google Apple Explained, my website is one of the first results. That's because Squarespace has the best search engine optimization tools that'll make your website more visible to more people. So go to squarespace.com for a free trial, and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash Apple Explained to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. All right, now some people believe Apple is working on a true touch-based MacBook that'll be released in the next few years, mainly because of a Mac App Store faux pas that occurred in November 2020. A developer named Louis Mancha spotted a banner on the Mac App Store that featured a hand interacting with widgets on a horizontal display. 
When this was brought to Apple's attention, the image was removed immediately, suggesting that the graphic was either inaccurate or released too early before the launch of an upcoming touchscreen Mac. Either way, it fueled even more speculation, which I believe is justified. Take a look at Mac OS. It's an operating system designed for the precision of a cursor, but with Big Sur, Apple increased the size of icons and added more space between clickable elements, as if preparing for touch integration. And while this may sound far-fetched, consider the fact that Apple has technically already broken their own rule regarding vertical touchscreens. When they introduced the Magic Keyboard for iPad in 2020, it completely redefined the notebook experience. Suddenly, your iPad had a round cursor that could be controlled using a trackpad that also supported swipe gestures. It was the first time Apple really blurred the boundary between tablet and notebook. And I don't think it's something we should overlook. Apple built a notebook experience optimized for a touch-based operating system, which is something Microsoft has been trying to do for years with varying degrees of success. If Apple wanted, they could easily bring that same functionality to the MacBook, although there are different ways of going about it. Apple has filed many different patents regarding touch integration on the Mac, but two in particular have gained traction in the past year. First, this patent that utilizes your iPhone or iPad as a touch display rather than the one on your Mac. It'd be more ergonomic since they're horizontal displays, but they're also large enough to provide a more immersive touch experience than simple buttons or controls. In fact, many have wondered if this patent would allow an iPad to become a sort of Wacom tablet for the Mac, providing a wireless drawing experience unlike anything available on a Mac before. And while the touch bar wasn't a fan favorite, a physical keyboard with displays in each key may be received differently. This patent describes a physical keyboard with force touch technology and small displays built into each keycap, allowing users to reconfigure each key to their liking or different layouts for various applications, like programming, video editing, or essay writing. Apple was able to bring touch to the iPod, which initially had a click wheel interface, the iPhone, iPad, and Apple Watch. The technology has become so ubiquitous that customers have come to expect it from every Apple product that has a display. I've actually experienced this myself while in Best Buy. A customer approached a MacBook Air and tried tapping on the display only to realize it doesn't work. She said, wow, they want to charge that much and not even have a touch screen? And I'm afraid that sentiment will only become more and more common as users transition from mobile devices to the Mac. Because keep in mind, while the Macintosh was one of Apple's earliest products, it isn't necessarily the first Apple product customers buy today. iPads and iPhones make up the vast majority of product sales, and that means most people are first exposed to Apple's ecosystem through touch-based mobile devices, and then find themselves shopping for an Apple computer only to be disappointed that it doesn't deliver the multi-touch experience they've come to expect. So one way or another, I think it's very likely that Apple will implement touch on the Mac eventually, in a way that enhances the user experience without causing sore arms. Alright guys, thanks for watching till the end. Don't forget to subscribe to help decide which topics I cover in the future, and I'll see you in the next video.